You are listening to the Body Charge Podcast, and I'm your host, Sandy Sanderson. Welcome to the Body Charge Podcast. Today's topic is cultivating joy in a disharmonious world. And it is my great honor to welcome to my podcast, Dr. Jamie Turndorf, who is also known to millions as Dr. Love through her popular website, AskDrLove.com. She is the author of many bestsellers, including the number one international bestsellers, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye and Love Never Dies. Dr. Turndorf has appeared on every major TV and radio network in the USA and is a frequent keynote and workshop leader at the world's top venues. She also hosts the syndicated Ask Dr. Love radio and TV show. Dr. Jamie is not only a doctor with a PhD in psychology with 40 years of experience, but also a healer and a medium. When working with people, she combines her otherworldly insight, wisdom, and ability to see into the soul's depths, lighting the path of healing, joy, reconnection, love, and radical transformation. Her most recent bestseller book, If You Think You Don't Have PTSD, Think Again, underscores the effects of trauma and chronic stress and offers powerful strategies to heal. So, Jamie, Dr. Jamie, welcome aboard. And I'd like to start off with with a very profound question, um, which is very topical today. There's been, it's never been a more challenging time in human history, I think, because we have so many people on the planet. The world is changing so fast. We have high technology, old structures are falling apart, financial pressures are mounting. The family unit is being challenged And what often happens is people tend to dump their anxieties and frustrations on the ones that are closest to them. You must be thinking to yourself that all the strategies you have developed in your career are needed more than ever now to help people cope and move forward in a loving way um, and not in in a combative way. Yet the world outside of us in its disintegration and on, on all the changes, seems to be becoming even more competitive. So how how can we reconcile this and, and how can we simply survive this kind of existential crisis going on? How can we we um, become, create a little bubble of joy and and healing and you know relish for life uh, in this fast changing world? So that was a very uh intense and beautiful description of what's going on in the world today. And certainly there's a lot of problems in intimate relationships with with our family members, with our life partners and spouses. And one of the things that is very difficult for people is how to handle the inevitable conflicts that arise in our intimate relationships. So you're already stressed out from what's going on in the world. Then you come home And the people you love most are just getting on your last nerve. (laughs) And they, you know, it could be the smallest thing, but your fuse is so short. You know, in the PTSD book, I talk about how all it takes is one accident, one illness, or one stress for you to lose all your magnesium stores. And then you have PTSD. And when you have PTSD, your, your triggers are just so, so truncated down to nothing. You have no reserves whatsoever. Everything gets on your nerves. So one of the things I always say to people, spray electromagnesium on you. When you feel yourself starting to lose your mind, before you say a word, spray the magnesium on you to try to switch your brain from what's called sympathetic arousal or ANS arousal or the fight flight response into parasympathetic mode. Because when you're in uh, the fight flight mode, you cannot think straight. Higher order cognitive functions do not work. You have no uh, effective strategies available to you. Even things that you've memorized, they go right out the window. So is is it about energy? It's, It's about energy, isn't it? It's when we feel pain or we're exhausted we we don't have anything, as you said, in reserve. And and your fuse is very short. Yeah. Your fuse is so that's one of the features, you know, of PTSD and chronic fighting. So what most people don't realize is that the brain is always making associations. So here, I'll give you an example. 
a husband and wife are out to dinner and the husband keeps checking his wristwatch to make sure that he feeds the parking meter on time. But his wife thinks he wants to get out of the restaurant. So she just blows a gasket and starts screaming at him. If you want to get out of here, well, then just ask for the freaking check and we'll get out of here and, and, and take me home. She's going crazy. He has no idea what why she's reacting this way. It's because we all have something called the emotional lake effect. So our brains are wired to constantly compare present day events with the wounds we suffered in childhood. That I call childhood our deformative years because we are wired to associate back to the wounds and the boo-boos we suffered as kids that we never got to talk with our parents about, we never got to work through. So in the case of this example, this woman's father never had time for her. He was always ditching her, couldn't get, wait to be free of her. So in her mind, when her husband starts checking his watch, he wants to be rid of her. And she makes this unconscious association, the emotional lake effect. Why Mis do I call it? Misinterprets the messages. Right. Right. And it's unconscious because the emotional lake effect is happening to all of us all the time. We're constantly comparing the present day events with the wounds we suffered. It's happening unconsciously. But, you know, the actual lake effect is when a storm gathers force as it crosses, crosses over the Great Lakes, right, dips in, takes all this moisture, and then that creates this big storm and it dumps all the moisture on the leeward shores. So that's the lake effect. Well, we have an emotional lake effect. We're always dipping into the reservoir of our childhood, comparing present day events with the wounds we suffered as kids. And without knowing it, we are blowing a gasket because we are emotionally remembering all the times in the past where something similar happened to us. And so when we react, it's strong, it's disproportionate, it's extremely intense, and we have no idea why. But the minute you react in that intense way, you are pushing the other person's buttons. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's a memory, isn't it? It's a stored memory from the past. Yes. And, and the brain conjures it up as a kind of a solution perhaps oh well you know this is how it's similar to what happened before and if I draw on this memory somehow or other it thinks it's, it's not gonna... happening like that it's no? not happening consciously at all uh, we are it's purely unconscious this is why if you ask someone why are you screaming they don't know because they're not like I had a couple yesterday the husband simply said, I would like to give a gift to an old family friend who has cancer. The wife was enraged and it was irrational. It was disproportionate. She had no idea why. So I asked her, let's strip. And I'm not talking about getting naked. I'm talking about stripping away the overt fight content, what you think is getting you so hot under the collar, the he wants to give this gift. Let's ask you to strip away the overt content and see if you can realize what the unconscious memory is that's got you so worked up. And so then she was able to say, oh my goodness, I had no idea. It reminds me of when I was little, and people made decisions that affected me and hurt me and nobody consulted me and I got gypped. And then she came up with a memory and this was all unconscious, completely unconscious. Yes. Then when the memory came up and she was able to talk through the original trauma because the brain is asking us to go back to these points of injury, to dredge them up so that we can give them airtime and heal them. To resolve so, them, yes. And yes, but the problem for couples is that they don't realize when they get into these rifts, or it doesn't even have to be couples, it could be in anybody, intimate partners, people don't realize, I am not seeing what the real issue is. And so I don't resolve the conflict with you because we're not even talking about what it is. So the rule of thumb is if your reaction is really strong, disproportionately strong to the current trigger, and you can't seem to shake it, 
Some childhood business is afoot. Some wound got awakened. You're in an emotional lake effect. You don't know it. And so what you want to do is you want to strip away the overt fight content and say, wait a minute, what does this remind me of from when I was young? With a mom, with a dad, with somebody, you know, during my deformative years, right? You know? Yes, I, I, that's amazing. You use the words deformative years because I I look at families sometimes interacting and I can see oh well he or she's behaving like the mother or father so and I'm thinking is this a genetic thing or is a learned behavior or why are these similarities kind of carried through from parent to child and then that child grows up and becomes a parent and then carries it Does forward the same thing. So but again unresolved. it's all unconscious it's unconscious I model after you I hated the way you behaved but I have modeled after my same sex parent generally and so I do the very things that I couldn't stand you doing and I'm not even aware that I'm doing it. So the beauty of making conscious what you're reacting to from the deformative years is that now you have the opportunity to transform your intimate relationship into an oasis of healing. So instead of becoming enemies and locking horns, when you trace back to the original injury, you can transform the person you're in fight in a fight with now into your from enemy to ally. So you can, by saying, you know what, what you said reminded me of when my dad had no time for me and he left me and I realized that's why I was blowing a gasket. The beauty of making that connection is you, you take the other person off the hot seat so that he or she can now say, oh, I have so much empathy for what happened to you. And so in the process, you are using the relationship for its most divine purpose to help each other heal these old scars. So now I can say, oh, tell me more. Let me understand. And now I'm giving you the understanding that you didn't get as a child from the parent who harmed you or the sibling who harmed you. And this is how we heal each other. And so so in, in, in a sense, partners become each other's parents, surrogate parents, or they, well, they I'm not, I'm, it doesn't have to be a surrogate parent, but it could be a conscious healing partner. Yes. So, so that's right. We're a safe space. Because, because we are friend. already, we're already parents to each other. Yes. It's said within 18 to 24 months, we become the parent that we had the most, that our partner had the most trouble with. Wow. So if I had <laughs> trouble, that's why most couples don't make it because the, this type of transference, which is universal causes so much emotional heat because now I am seeing you as the parent I had difficulty with and all my unresolved feelings get dumped onto you, my partner, my life partner, the person I'm close to. And I am trying to tear you a new uh, anal orifice. You know, <laughs> so I'm just ripping you and apart because I never got to work it out with the parent. Yes. Really hurt me and and as you said, some of these explosions or emotional outbursts make no sense in a particular context. No. And, and it's difficult for the other partner to really understand because they don't know where it's coming from either. Absolutely. And then Absolutely there's a reaction right. in the opposite direction. There's a defense right. mechanism that kicks in that says, I have to defend myself now. Absolutely that's not, right. That's Absolutely. not just, that's not, that's not fair. That's Absolutely. Which causes more fighting because you're not understanding me. So, I mean, kiss your fights goodbye presents my actual 12 step method for resolving conflicts in intimate relationships works for over 95% of the people who use it, um, gay, straight, single, bi, it doesn't matter, works for family, coworkers, friends. And one of the things that's so important here is that you have to learn how to present the issue in a way that doesn't aim your cannons at the other person, because then the person's so defensive, yeah. you are shooting yourself in the foot rather than getting the healing and the understanding you need. So in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, in my conflict resolution method, I teach you how to present the issue with a disclaimer. Listen, I know you would never intentionally hurt me. And then my XY formula, when you said X, I felt Y, and then you explain what it reminded you of from the deformative years. 
Yes. And another another thing that um, interests me is the difference of perception of stress between men and women and that different psychology of what that's wonderful how how women react to stress and how okay, men really what causes wonderful. the difference okay so in kiss your fights goodbye i present the number one fight pattern between men and women and it's called this is a mouthful the demand withdraw negative escalation cycle or husband withdrawal for short sure. For short. And no, husband withdrawal is not referring to a natural form of birth control. This is <laughs> a physiologically driven difference between men and women. So men's bodies are hardwired to be hyper reactive to stress and danger. That wiring dates back to prehistoric times when men were hunters and, and they protectors. Needed, they needed to react with lightning speed to flee or fight dangerous prey. So the modern danger isn't the ferocious tiger, tiger, it's the pissed off wife or girlfriend. When she comes at him, baring her teeth, berating him with criticisms and intense emotional heat, his body sees danger and involuntarily flips into the fight flight mode and he withdraws. Now, I have done decades of studies proving this. That this happens with, you know, proving the different physiological reaction that you alluded to, how men withdraw. And there are three ways that all men withdraw from conflict. The first way is obvious. They physically leave the room or the house or they avoid contact. They hide out in the workshop or the basement. That's physical withdrawal. But there are two other ways that men withdraw when they're in this chemical imbalance fight flight mode. They verbally withdraw by escaping responsibility, defending themselves, justifying themselves. So they're defending, escaping, withdrawing. And the third way that they withdraw is what I call psychic withdrawal. They're physically present, but they're mentally out to lunch. They look deaf, dumb, and blind. They're drooling on their tie. They have a glazed over expression. They they just are not physically there. And these are all the physical manifestations of almost, this chemical Almost balance. like a Siri robot. That's absolutely true. And if you look, and in my studies, I describe this in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, you will see that they're like, no hablo inglés. There's nobody home. But the the, the most diabolical thing is, because women do not know that heated fighting triggers this chemical imbalance in men and makes them withdraw in one of three ways. The woman thinks you don't care enough about me to stick around, to physically stick around, mentally stick around, verbally stick around. So they get so hurt, not understanding it's primitive biological programming causing these withdrawal reactions. So what does the woman do? She gets more heated and unwittingly triggers even more chemical imbalance. Because he's not listening and I should be shouting louder, right? And Right. And that, like this is going to blast the wax from his ears without knowing it. She's creating more of a chemical imbalance. So what I teach women how to do is you have to cool it down because it is heated fighting that triggers these chemical reactions, the withdrawal reaction. And you got to spray the electromagnesium to go into parasympathetic mode and you've got to cool your jets. Even if you feel like belting him over the head, you have got to be cool if you want him to stick around and see the conflict discussion through to resolution. And the most amazing thing, the research shows that when conflict is unresolved, you have less and less chance of resolving the same issue with each new approach. Because the next time you bring up this hot topic, the person remembers it didn't go well before. And so they're already in ANS arousal fight, flight, before it starts. And in really conflicted relationships, their chemistry never returns to baseline. So they're always in the fight flight response. And this is dangerous. It it's actually shortens defensive. the lifespan. It shortens the lifespan. Yeah. It hurts yeah. your endothelial system, your arteries. People literally lose their lives because you can never problems. relax you can never recover no. you can never regenerate no. No. because no. you're always 
are worrying about what's next and being on guard and you know 24 7 anxiety and that wears you down more than anything absolutely but the good news my method does reverse this cycle it works you know i'll tell you a story that is so uplifting i when i lived in millbrook new york a very famous doctor and his wife came to see me the wife is crying and she's raging at him how you never listen to me. You're always avoiding me. You're hiding in the basement. I can't get you to pay attention to me. I've been telling you for decades what you're doing wrong. And I look over at him. He's in psychic withdrawal. He's just like not even listening. He's out. So I said to her, listen, I know you think you've told him. And I know you think he's heard you. But I promise you, he has not heard a word you've said. Because part of being in this fight flight response is the hearing shuts down, complete cognitive shutdown. I said, so I want to ask you to just tell him one more time, but the way I instruct you to tell him calmly, the X, Y formula, simple description of what he's done, or what he's doing and how you feel about it. She says, it won't work. It won't work. I've done it before. I said, just humor me, do it the way I'm telling you and be calm. So she says again, calmly a a simple problem statement what he's doing how she feels about it he looks at her bursts into tears crying says i never knew what i was doing to upset you i will change and he changed and i got a i um i got a call a couple years later from that moment on we have been in bliss wow that's amazing and yes, yeah, so so these um emotional um programs, if you like, they're like a viral program in in our biological computer, and so so when pressures increase and we're low in magnesium because we can't recover very quickly, magnesium makes us more right. hypersensitive That's with right. the shorter fuse. Uh, we get more easily triggered and it's like an escalation. It's like a perfect storm can come That's together. Right. And right. and this can happen within um, beautiful families where there's lots of love. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. you know, these families need just better coping mechanisms to get their footing back. It's like, you know, I mean, getting you off the path. Is, you need to learn how to properly present what's troubling you because n- most of us copy what was done in our first families. And our first families didn't know how to handle negative feelings. Uh, you know, the no, angry it was just feeling. whack. Uh, Get just over act, it. <laughs> and acting out verbally. And, you know, in Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, I go through all the fight traps. These are the faulty, dysfunctional ways that we communicate about our negative feelings when a conflict arises. And you've got to identify your your fight traps, your dysfunctional fighting tactics and ditch them because they heat the climate and cause more withdrawal reactions. So you have to you have to learn, you have to go to love school and you've got to learn love how <laughs> to properly communicate your negative feelings in a way that's not going to send the other person um, packing. And, um, and then, so really... Conflict resolution revol- it revolves around properly presenting your yes. issue. And and having a safe space where you're not on guard and you feel okay and that no one's going to hurt you or harm you anymore. And That's right. you can be who you are and say how you feel and have your partner receive that message, as you said, in a calm but it starts way. with how you present it, yes. because if you're attacking the other person or using these fight traps, these, you know, there is a, what the I call open, go up again, right? Open yeah. warfare and secret warfare. A lot, open warfare are the outward displays of aggression, name calling, character assassination, put downs. Right. And then there's secret warfare, which still triggers, you know, the biochemical imbalance, guilt tripping, whining, complaining, or power plays guilt trip, power plays, um, recruiting allies, uh, passive aggressors. So I listed all, it's important for you to identify what you're doing. How do you eliminate something if you don't know what it is you're doing? And for a lot of people, you know, I was walking in the street in New York City in the jewelry district and a woman walked up to me and she was with her husband. She said, do you remember us? And I said, I think so. You had a couple session with me 
I don't know, 10 years ago, I was watching the two of them verbally attack each other. And I told them, these are attacks. You can't talk to each other this way. And they said, we didn't know that. It never occurred to us. This is how our parents talk. And when you told us we're not allowed, we stopped and we've been happy ever since. So, I mean, but they just didn't know. Yes. Yeah. It's about raising that autopilot old memory into the conscious mind That's to nice. pull it apart and understand it and know that it it comes from a very primitive place it's not Automatic. really sophisticated and it's auto autopilot yeah autopilot and, and that's what they mean about being mindful and this is why meditation is so good as well because it helps us to see inside of us a little bit more i find that it's hard the hardest thing is to see yourself from other people's perspectives right but so when you practice I, meditation you can you start observe. to detach and observe more rather right. than being reactive and subjective right and so if you have that practice under your belt then it makes it easier when you get triggered to be able to step back and say i want to observe myself that's called using the observing ego the part of the psyche that can step outside be like in a little um camera in the corner of the room watching yourself like a subject and so uh, that's funny and then and the next step is also to recognize when you've been part of something where you where you've contributed to it. maybe not all of it but you need to be prepared to say well yeah some of that was my bad i'm sorry but, i won't absolutely. do it again absolutely and not and not hang on to a position like we see politicians now, doing so, <laughs> so the problem is when the wounds are triggered from childhood and you feel like the wounded little kid, it's very hard to find the maturity to say, oh, I see my part. Because when you go into that pathway of you're reminding me of something that was done to me when I was very young and I was an innocent victim, right? So it takes a, it's very difficult to come out of that to say, oh, I have a part in it. You will see, I had a couple... The woman was beating on the husband. He was crying. Mucus was pouring out of his nose. She was punishing him the way she never could punish her parent. And he was just a wounded dog. So for her to be able to make that shift to, wait a minute, he's not your parent. He didn't do this to you. You have to make that separation. But she was so damaged, so injured, that this was very hard to do. So this is why I come back to, working together to heal the old scars so yeah. if you can say piece at, by at, piece at this moment i'm not able to even get out of my own pain and say oh my bad or i had a part in it help me to heal the memory that's being triggered help me and then when i'm more healed little by little i'm less and less triggered by present day events as yeah. the wounds are worked through then it becomes easier for me to take my responsibility you you kind of have to nudge them out of that old repetitive bad habit that became an unconscious habit it's like nudging out of it very gradually I, and creating a it, new habit but i think it's more than a habit it's more like because that's focusing on behavior and i'm focusing more on the feeling and the healing of yep. the emotion because you know the cognitive behavioral therapy is the trend in this world today but they're missing the feelings yeah and if you don't get to the feeling the wound that triggers the feeling you can't change the behavior well we've got a couple of minutes left dr jamie so um if someone wants to connect with you and explore further what they can do with a one-on-one -on -one session with you, what should they do? Oh, well, you can come to askdrlove, A-S-K-D-R-love.com. And you can see under the store, there's all kinds of ways to uh, connect with me. I have a grief release session. I believe we're going to be talking more about resolving conflicts with those in spirit in another interview. So there's yes. the grief release session. There's the energetic system upgrade just for helping you to kind of up level your yes. energetic system and uh, kind of zero in then to find where is your sticking point, whether it's emotional, physical, spiritual, and help you to uh, break free of what's sticking you. Or if you're not sure what you need, a discovery session, it's all there at AskDrLove.com. And by the way, for uh, if people wish to sign up for the newsletter, uh, there's a, a little excerpt of Love Never Dies. That's the, the 
number one Hay House bestseller. And uh, what else? That Yeah, the newsletter yes. is a good way to get started. Yes, subscribe definitely and stay in touch with Dr. Jamie. I'm so looking forward to the next session where we'll be diving more into our spiritual selves and what the bigger picture looks like now that we've started with the physical down-to-earth microcosm. We're going to move into the macrocosm next. So yeah. um, thank you very much for, for this wonderful um, discussion. I'm sure people will get huge amounts out of it and um, so ca catch you soon. It's great to be with you, Sandy. Thanks. If you enjoyed the video, please share with others. You can also subscribe to our channel to be notified of future videos. To be notified about new blogs and product special offers, please subscribe to our newsletters at electromagnesium.com.au.